So, some of the more long-term subscribers amongst you are probably aware that I love Aurora's music. I made a video analysing her Exist For Love song as soon as I first heard it. Same again with her Secret Garden song, I talked about her in my Power of Playfulness video. I think I even mentioned her randomly in my Jojo Rabbit video, but... I'm probably at the stage now where I'm starting to think she might be my favourite singer, because I do consistently find myself going back to her music more frequently than other artists. And since I put out a poll quite some time back about what type of content to make and you were all overwhelmingly unanimously screaming in favour of more Aurora content, I thought I'd go back and analyse probably her most popular song, Runaway. Naturally this will all be my personal interpretation and I'd be interested to know what other people think, but that stands as a disclaimer for every video I make really. Um, the mad thing about this song though is that she wrote it when she was 11. <laughs> Even at 16 everything I wrote was awful. How do you write something not just so good but so emotionally mature at that age? I mean I guess she might have refined it and rewrote it when she got older admittedly but I don't know that either way and still. Um, I wrote Runaway when I was 11 years old and it's quite funny because the older I got, the more it made sense to me, the more it touched um, my heart and now it, it means, it reminds me of things that happened after I wrote it so it's kind of like it was a gift to myself. Anyway, let's just get into it. The song opens with some slightly echoed singing that gives us a sort of sanctified purity feel, perhaps fitting with the sense of innocence and childhood present in this song. I was listening to the ocean I saw a face in the sand But when I picked it up Then it vanished away from my hands Done. So we got Aurora away on a beach listening to the ocean, which is a classic symbol for journey and travel overseas or an idea of escape or of adventure um, both escape and adventure often being the same thing I think dreaming of escape she spots what looks like a face in the sand and I wouldn't be at all surprised if this is a true story about something that 11 year old Aurora literally saw there was a face in the sand and she wanted to try picking it up but it crumbled away when she touched it at that age, she probably wouldn't have a clue what it meant symbolically, only that it felt strangely meaningful to her in an unconscious way. Meaningful enough that she wanted to put that image into a song. As far as I see it, this is an image about wanting to be somebody else, wanting to have this face and to be able to put it on and for that to be you. Something we all regularly try in our own little ways, being something or someone beyond who we think we actually are, only of course the face crumbles because it's not Aurora. I had a dream I was seven Climbing my way in a tree I saw a piece of heaven Waiting and patient for me Dark. And here's another image of reaching out for something just a little bit beyond us climbing up a tree to grab a piece of heaven that's there for her, it's impatiently waiting for her to reach it, but she doesn't. Um, I mean, okay, she doesn't literally say in the song that she never reaches it, but A, this image of climbing a tree ends with the refrain down to suggest falling from the tree, and failing to reach it also links with the image of the face in the sand crumbling. If she did actually obtain it, I think she'd have written, I reached, or grabbed or took a piece of heaven or something like that rather than just seeing it. Um, plus this is a dream she's having. Dreams being the very embodiment of escaping into adventure and wonder or something far beyond our ordinary lives only for it to always, always come to an end with us crashing back down to the more mundane reality and never quite reaching life in this dream world I guess. Um, also, we can't rule out the possibility of a near-death experience here with falling from a tree and heaven perhaps being impatient to take her. Maybe you could read it that way. I'm still just about young enough that I can remember that desperate, restless feeling of wanting to grow up that you can have as a kid. Um, obviously not always, sometimes you think the reverse, but 
the impatience to head out and take the world by storm, that's what this song makes me think of, the purity and innocence of a child's wish to just grow up, um, partly to be somebody more, partly to escape and not have to put up with the parents you often love but also often find unbearable a lot of the time, and, and partly just for the sheer adventure of it. Life seems so, so exciting when you're young. Daunting, but exciting, and that's the feeling, the wonderfully pure, sanctified, innocent sort of feeling as far as I see it, that natural, childish excitement about life. An excitement that's often also at odds with the world. Hence the bridge and the chorus we then get. And I was running far away, would I run off the world someday? Nobody knows, nobody knows. And I was dancing in the rain, I felt alive and I can't complain. You know what sums up this simply innocent excitement for life? Dancing in the rain. It's not a thing you do for any reason other at all than to express joy, and Aurora is just running for the sheer delight of it, running away into nature and exploring beyond that small, safe, sheltered world she has known as a child to discover something more. Literally running over the edge of the world as she knows it. Will she fall off? Will there be anything out there? Nobody knows, and <laughs> it doesn't matter, that's the fun of exploring in a way, finding out for yourself, seeing what happens when you get there. It's such a beautiful feeling to have in those times when we have it, and yet the song isn't exploding with joy here. That's interesting. It's just a slow build to something that then dies away. The chorus drops out and goes very quiet. No, take me home, take me home where I belong. I can't take it anymore. You know, oh, suddenly exploring doesn't feel so exciting and joyful. Maybe it's more complicated than that. I can remember being about 14 and deciding I was going to adventure out on my own and just be in nature. Um, I packed a bit of food and a sleeping bag and just went wandering. Barefoot as well. Um, I used to walk everywhere barefoot. And it was the height of summer um, and in my head I was going to have this idealised journey into nature and sleep by a river somewhere and carry on the next day. Um, my dad was a bit confused by the plan but was like sure go ahead because I suspect he knew I would get about several hours into the journey and then be like actually I kind of want to go home now <laughs> which is exactly what happened after the excitement wore off the prospect of being on my own at 14 years old completely lost in the middle of nowhere sleeping in a sleeping bag without a tent suddenly <laughs> didn't quite seem so appealing, so I just went home again. The point is, I guess, sometimes the problem with our desire to explore is that we can be disappointed with what we discover, or sometimes just disappointed when we don't quite feel as free as we were hoping to. And there's that idea they say about holidays, that we take holidays to different places to try and escape ourselves, only after a week or two of being in this different location, we realise we haven't escaped ourselves at all, we took ourselves along for the journey as well, and it's all still there with us, just in a different setting. And at that point we get fed up and want to go home again. Um, or it's similar to what I talked about in my Coraline video, Coraline fed up with her boring family and wanting to escape into something more wonderful, only for her to realise actually she loves her family after all, and wants to go home to them again. The chorus on this first time round feels very low and quiet, like Aurora is disappointed with her adventure. And then we get the second verse. I was painting a picture The picture was a painting of you And for a moment I thought you were here But then again it wasn't true love. It's a third example of something being beyond her. I could go into it more, um, but you know, the face that crumbles when she touches it, the piece of heaven just a little bit far beyond the tree, now the picture that looks like somebody she knows but isn't that person, is just an image of them. What's important is the realisation these three different images bring her to. And all this time I have been lying, oh lying in secret to myself. She 
suddenly realised, hang on, this isn't just about the fun of exploring, it's not just as simple as that, there's also something else going on here. Why are you running away? What are you running away from? From her sorrow, from her life, from herself. It's at this moment of realisation that the song flips into one of great self-love and acceptance, because Aurora doesn't need to run from who she is. She doesn't need to dream of being anybody else or living any other life. She will at times, of course, um, and she'll still want to go out exploring, which is a good thing to do, <laughs> a very good thing, but she doesn't need to escape, I guess. She can accept herself for who she is and fall in love with that. Um, hence the chorus this time round does explode into a triumphant sense of joy and celebration of love and going home. She wants to go home now, she's fallen in love with home all over again. And we do then get this break that reveals the vulnerability once more. But I kept running for a soft place to fall And I kept running for a soft place to fall Which I think tells us again about running from herself in the hopes of finding something more, some perfect place to rest and then we get the chorus again even more joyful this time round but I just want to finish my thoughts on this song with one other point. Exploring is heading out somewhere externally and actively discovering the world. Going home is an internal thing of wrapping up in our cocoons um, and Yes, while some of us are more introverted or more extroverted and we have all sorts of anxieties and different things, this is still a natural process we all go through constantly, you know, excitedly heading out into the external and then when we feel ready, running back to the internal until we get restless and wanting to run out again and back and forth we go. The song is a very nice demonstration of that process. It's a song about a child being very eager to grow up and conquer the world and be somebody more but then also realising she quite likes who she is at the moment and where she is and being happy to celebrate that. It's wonderful, it's so, so mature for its age, an absolute masterpiece of a song about such a, such a significant emotion and experience but not an obvious one. This is not an obvious feeling for anybody to have the awareness to reflect on and write a song about at any age, let alone 11. Um, I could not love this song any more than I already do, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts, give it a like, subscribe, support me on Patreon if you fancy that sort of thing, but otherwise, hopefully see you next time. And, as always, a special thank you goes to David Kling, Darren Burdock Latter, Kestrel, Biden Bulk the Streak, Tommy Steamrod, Samara Sousey, Sheriff of 2814, and Joshua C. Follier. Thank you.